the moderator for this conference. Welcome to the conference call of Root Mobile Limited, hosted by Concept Investor Relations, to discuss its Q4 and FY22 results. We have with us today Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta, Managing Director and Group CEO, Mr. Gautam Badalia, Group Chief Strategy Officer and Chief Investor Relations Officer, Mr. Suresh Jankar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. John Owen, CEO, Europe and America. At this moment, all participants are in listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, if you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risk and uncertainties. Kindly refer to slide number two of the presentation for the detailed disclaimer. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, good evening, everyone. I want to start by wishing all of you a good health and prosperity. We have had another strong quarter. In fact, we have yet again posted our best quarterly revenue. It gives me immense pleasure to highlight that we have outperformed our revenue growth guidance of 30% revenue growth in FY22. We have demonstrated an industry-leading growth rate of 42% in FY22. Adjusted to our acquisition, our organic revenue has grown by 33% year-on-year basis. Heading into FY23, we are already witnessing very strong growth momentum, and we are confident of delivering at least 40% year-on-year growth in FY23. The following are some of the key highlights of our quarter gone by. India continues to be a very strong and important market for RML and we are aggressively gaining market share. We have onboarded a number of large clients in the quarter gone by and including few large BFSI clients. Root Mobile UK Limited was listed as one of the top three fastest growing Indian companies in the United Kingdom. We completed the acquisition of MRM during the quarter gone by. MRM acquisition will help expand Root Mobile's reach to new geographies, primarily Europe, South Africa, and Japan. We have recently signed business transfer agreement with T-Laser to acquire DLT, trusted blockchain and AI-powered solution. The closure of this transaction is subject to completion of condition precedents, including the outcome of an ongoing arbitration proceedings. Root Mobile Limited has also set up a dedicated SBU for short code, 10 DLT, toll-free messaging, and intend to scale it globally for P2A messaging. We have signed three new firewall contracts in quarter uh, Q4, 22. We participated in events like MWC Barcelona, Jitec Dubai, and others. Further, after almost two years of a pandemic, we conducted our global team meet at Goa as a part of our EOP planning. Reward and recognition of our employees and the forum to socialize with the, our employees in person, including the employees of the companies acquired during the last two years. In terms of hiring, we have added 21 employees in Mesavian to expand our reach in adjoining markets like Mexico, Chile, and Brazil. We believe this investment will start to yield results for, uh, for us in Q3, uh, FY23 onwards, in terms of depending, deepening our penetration in Latin market. Now, some of these measures have naturally had some impact on our operating overheads, but we believe margins will show market improvement in our forthcoming quarters. In terms of our EBITDA margin, we are confident of delivering a 150 basis point improvement in our EBITDA margin in FY23. In terms of our award and recognition, Root Mobile won gold at the 2020 Juniper Research Report. And finally, based on our good performance in 21-22, the board of directors has approved the final dividend of finance 2 rupees per share. I will now turn over to Gautam to take us through the financials. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rajiv. Good evening, everyone. Hope you and your family are safe and fine. We've already uploaded our quarterly earnings presentation on our website as well as uh, the stock exchange websites. Hope you had a chance to go through them. Uh, we've also uploaded a follow-on note uh, today uh, uh, to just uh, clarify certain uh, one-off items. Uh, hope you had a chance to go through them as well. 
I'll quickly summarize our financial and operating performance during Q4 FY22 and for the full year FY22 before opening the floor for Q&A. The key takeaway from our financial performance uh, in Q4 uh, FY22 has been the strong revenue growth momentum as highlighted by uh, Razi. On a YOY basis, we have demonstrated a revenue growth of 73% and on Q on Q basis, we have demonstrated a revenue growth of 11%. In fact, our exit monthly revenue run rate for the month of March 2022 was around INR 2620 million. And we believe FY23 will continue to witness similar growth momentum. While there is seasonality in the business, but the endeavor will be to maintain the monthly run rate clocked in March 2022. In volume terms, we processed uh, over 18 billion billable transactions in Q4, which is again the highest quarterly billable volumes processed by us till date. We continue to, as Rajiv highlighted, we continue to gain significant market share in one of our very key markets, that is India. And in FY23, our revenues coming from termination in India, both domestic and international, should be northwards of US dollars 175 million. The contraction in EBITDA margin from uh, from 14.2% in Q4 FY21 and 13.7% in Q3 FY22 to 11.1% in Q4 FY22 is partially attributable to the seasonality uh, of the business, especially of Massivian and certain one-off expenses. Q4 FY21, which incidentally happens to be Q1 CY22 for Massivian, historically accounts for around 20% of their annual revenue. And they have uh, very high fixed overheads, which is largely the human capital cost. As revenues ramp up, operating leverage kicks in. So as they uh, uh, head into the uh, financial year, the performance of the business starts to improve drastically. We have also uploaded an annexure highlighting the impact of this seasonality in the workings. Further, we believe LATAM is a very high margin market and some of the micro markets within LATAM are massively under penetrated and are at this point in time undergoing digital transformation. Hence, we have invested in expanding our sales teams in Chile, Mexico, and Brazil, which we have identified as key markets for growth uh, within LATAM. The returns from this incremental investment should start accruing to us from Q3 FY23 onwards. Further, there were certain uh, operating expenses, which totaled to about five, 55 million in INA terms, which pertain to the conferences, events like MWC, Barcelona, Gaitex, Dubai, uh, events and an annual global employee meet for the AOP planning rewards and recognition for employees uh, and within this we've also uh, uh, invited all the employees from other acquired entities so, uh, so ideally so all of these cost would have been incurred or provision for across the quarters but uh, the impact was uh, there only in Q4 FY22 so to that extent we have kind of uploaded and low note which captures the impact of the aforesaid on our EBITDA margin for the quarter gone by. With this backdrop, let me walk you through our financial performance. In terms of Q4 FY22 performance, revenue from operations grew by 72.7% from 3624 million in Q4 FY21 to 6261 million in Q4 FY22. There was a sequential growth of 11.2%. Billable transactions increased from 9 billion in Q4 FY21 and 16 billion in Q3 FY22 to 18 billion in Q4 FY22. Average realization per billable transactions remained stable at 35 pesa in Q4 FY21 as compared to the last quarter. However, it reduced from 41 pesa in Q4 FY21 to 35 pesa, owing to lower average realization per billable transaction in Massivian. Uh, and lower email average realization. Gross profit margin remained stable at 21% in Q4 FY22. In terms of operating overheads, there was also a non-cash charge of INR 95 million owing to the ESOPs that were granted uh, in the previous quarter. Uh, adjusted for that uh, and, uh, for, uh, and some of the reasons mentioned above, EBITDA grew by 35.3% from 50 515 million in Q4 FY21 to 697 million in Q4 FY22. Sequentially, EBITDA declined by 9.7% from 772 million in Q3 FY22 to 697 million in Q4 
FY22 owing to reasons uh, reasons mentioned above. Effective tax rate for the quarter was 16%. However, because of uh, tax refund received in 365 squared and deferred tax credit, overall tax amount in Q4 was negative 0.6 million. Adjusted profit for tax grew by 59.2% from 398 million in Q4 FY21 to 634 million in Q4 FY22 as compared to 620 million in Q3 FY22. Adjusted profit margin was at 10.1% in Q4 FY22 as against 11% in Q3 FY22 and 11% in Q4 FY21. Now coming to the full year performance, revenue from operations grew by 42.4% from 14,062 million in FY21 to 20,020 million in FY22. In terms of certain KPIs, Delivery transactions increased from 32 billion in FY21 to 52 billion in FY22. Average realization per billable transaction was 38 paisa in FY22 as against 44 paisa in FY21. And this decline was uh, pursuant to, uh, I mean, the lower realizations in Messenger and the, the lower email average realization. We had a net revenue retention of 134% as uh, highlighted in slide 21 of the earnings uh, update. We added over 180 new customers in Q4 FY22 across all products. Gross profit margin expanded from 19.7% in FY21 to 21% in FY22. EBITDA grew by 46.7% from 1756 million in FY21 to 2576 million in FY22. In terms of operating leverage, EBITDA is a percentage of gross profit. Uh, uh, was 63% in FY21 and 61% in FY22. EBITDA margin expanded from 12.5% in FY21 to 12.9% in FY22. Effective tax rate for the full year in FY22 was 13% as against 18% for reasons mentioned above. Adjusted profit for tax grew by 40.6% from 1483 million in FY21 to 2085 million in uh, Adjusted tax margin was at 10.4% in FY22 to 10.5% in FY21. Attrition rate has increased from 11% in FY21 to 21% in FY22. Net cash and cash equivalent on the books was uh, uh, 10262 million as on 31st March 2022. CFO2 EBITDA conversion was 52% in FY22. Uh, so at the end of the uh, six months, at the end of, uh, so as on 30th September, the CFO to EBITDA was negative. So the business has, uh, I mean, to be uh, significantly transferred in terms of the CFO to EBITDA conversion. Uh, average receivable days was 57 days in FY22. We've excluded uh, in this analysis uh, the receivables from Mr. Messaging, CBN and Intertelico because these were acquired recently. Average payable days uh, increased from 80 days to uh, 86 days in FY22. We onboarded 174 new employees in FY22. And just to kind of give some perspective on uh, the amortization related to some of uh, to all the acquisitions that we have done. So we estimate in FY23, the overall amortization impact uh, will be around 518 million. And uh, the interest cost, uh, again, as part of the purchase price allocation will be around 140 million. Uh, for FY23. With these highlights, we open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and 1 at this time. The first question is from the line of Pritesh Chetta from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, on the cash conversion cycle and on the uh, working capital cycle, uh, there is a big change post these acquisitions. Uh, whatever you have shown in the presentation... I interrupt you, Mr. Chetta, but your audio is not very clear. Can you please move the, mic, uh, the mouthpiece a little further from yourself and then speak? Is it clear now? Yes, thank you. Yeah. 
so uh, post the acquisition there is a significant change in the working capital cycle the receivable days and the cash flow conversion uh, what you have shown in the presentation is whatever 57 days but you know when we try to look at from the balance sheet it seems to suggest that the receivable days is about 87 88 days uh so my question here is that uh, is this the is this the uh, uh the conversions that uh, the working capital cycle on the receivable side we have to look at and when we are trying to look at the balance sheet change in receivable days and payable days and trying to correlate with the cash flows uh, you know they aren't telling so is there anything that you want to highlight so this is my question one and my question two is uh, you know all this time we have been giving growth uh, guidance uh, on uh, revenue uh, and a certain margin guidance uh, you know when when i'm trying to look at the per uh, transaction ebitda number uh, uh, and the total transaction number isn't it that uh, we should actually look at that particular area and post messivian and all these acquisitions uh there is a drop in realization correspondingly uh you know there is a drop in uh, ebitda per transaction so that's about a little shade than four paise is that the number that we should look forward sure sure so coming to your query on receivables uh, uh hi uh, this is gotham here uh so i the reason why we kind of excluded messivian mr uh, messaging and intertelico was because of uh, they being acquired i mean for for very limited i mean so they were there uh, on the balance sheet for very limited time frame so if we were to kind of do the uh, receivable analysis for each of them individually messivian on an annualized basis uh, will the dso days will be about 48 days for mr messaging it will be about 54 days for intertelico it will be about 38 days so at a blended level it will uh, our dso days wouldn't uh, uh, from so go up in mean, fact it will come down it will come down marginally that's correct okay so that uh, answers the first part of the question yes. uh, within that i told ask that why does your uh, cash flow and the balance sheet change in receivable and change in payable doesn't match sorry what is this uh, if you can just so, repeat your question so if you do a simple change in from last year to this year the change in uh, debtors is about uh, 200 plus crores and the change in payable is about 150 plus crore but when you try to look at the cash flow statement the numbers are completely different sure we can take this offline but uh, uh, i mean the, the payables also have certain element which is there in other current financial liabilities which is outstanding expenses uh so maybe maybe the difference could be uh, uh, owing to that but we can definitely discuss this offline and close this out okay no problem and the other question was on the profitability side uh, less than 4 paise is what we see this quarter uh so when you're giving your guidance on revenue at 262 crores and you know your your guidance on 30% growth and margin guidance Uh, isn't it that uh, you should be actually giving the billable transaction guidance and the corresponding uh, uh, corresponding uh, ebitda per transaction guidance what would be the direction there yes sir this i raj ji i think uh, it is very tough to give that kind of a guidance you know like to be honest it is not so easy because there are multiple customer and different pricing you know so i think it is always better to just uh, get analysis on quarter on quarter basis uh, on this Okay, I'll take this offline as well. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Chopra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. I had a couple of questions on revenues and then uh, on on the margin. So, firstly, on revenues. Uh, so. Uh, Mr. Messaging, I think this quarter you reported almost six and a half million euros, and uh, the I guess it was integrated only for a month. So uh, the the run rate seems to be far ahead of uh, the fifty six and a half million euros of PY twenty one. But does this have some sort of a strong seasonality here that we should be mindful of and expect uh, lower year revenue there, or how should we be thinking about the run rate considering uh, what we integrated in the month of March? 
So Ashish Rajdeep here, uh, and I think the Mr. Messaging performance is. I think we are very much sure that uh, they will continue with the same kind of uh, revenue on a monthly basis. Okay. So Rajdeep, actually, I am a bit confused with respect to the uh, conservatism on your revenue guidance because you mentioned that you closed March with 262 crores. Uh, Annualising that number itself is in excess of 3100 crores, and you are guiding for a Somewhere close to at least 2,800 crores kind of revenues. Okay. Oh, I think you're okay, right. You know, yeah, you're right. So, see, you uh, uh, see, we are guiding 40% growth, right? And uh, based on our last so many quarters, uh, so many years performance, I think we always overachieve our uh, numbers. Uh, you may take that as a conservative number for sure, but uh, I think 40% growth is also beyond the industry growth. So I think it's better to guide at least 40% as a uh, fixed growth rate, you know. Yeah, no, I understand that. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the question really was so, twofold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ashish, if I can just add, so there is some amount of seasonality in the business, but definitely the endeavor will be to maintain that 262 uh, uh, crore uh, uh, March run rate. But from a guidance perspective, we want to be conservative and hence that 40%. But the endeavor is definitely to stick to that 262 crore monthly run rate uh, that we have been, that we have clocked in March. Fair enough, because because where I was coming from was that March, if anything, had a weaker seasonality with Mercedes only uh, getting 20% of the revenues in the quarter. And uh, you also have your product business, which keeps growing at a very healthy rate. So I thought there was more to come in terms of uh, in terms of growth. Uh, that was where I was coming from. And plus last year, Rajdeep, like you had called out a 30% growth rate, which was organic and you ended up exceeding that. Uh, would you want to call out uh, this time around as well, considering the number of uh, pieces that are getting integrated in the business as to how are you looking at the organic growth run rate? Can that kind of match the 33% momentum we saw last year or any thoughts on that? Definitely, yes, Ashish. I think uh, organic growth will definitely be at the same rate. So you can take that as a, yeah. Understood. And on the EBITDA margin guidance, you mentioned that you're confident of uh, 150 basis points improvement in FI23. Uh, should we read this improvement on the adjusted EBITDA margin that you report of 12.9% or would this include maybe some of the tail off of uh, uh, ESOP charges? How should we be thinking of it? Yeah, so on the adjusted uh, EBITDA margin, uh, I mean, actually it will get reflected on both, both the accounts. Uh, there will be some some benefit because of the ease of charge. I mean, uh, gradually uh, kind of plateauing and then gradually tapering off. But uh, uh, on both counts, I think uh, we should be able to demonstrate a 150 basis point improvement. Understood. And then, yeah. Oh, and should this yeah should should this be front ended considering that March is uh, the quarter when you generally see this seasonal weakness on the back of a a high uh, third quarter. So, so are you? Uh, I mean, just just how are you expecting the trajectory to build there on the margins? Are there some immediate recouping of some of the one-off costs that you highlighted in your opening remarks, uh, which would uh, see our Vita uh, margins improve much more in the first half? Or how are you uh, kind of thinking about the trajectory to the course of the year? Yeah, some of those expenses were definitely. I mean, uh, kind of. Uh, 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 Largely, uh, I mean, skewed in Q4. So some of that benefit will definitely kick in. Uh, but uh, we will, uh, so as a practice, I mean, accounting practice, we will be provisioning for some of this cost, I mean, from a overall year perspective. So some impact will be there, I mean, in terms of that cost, I mean, being there in Q1, FI23 as well. And for Macedian, we have kind of invested into the employees, uh, have had the new employees, expanded the sales team into the new geographies. Uh, so to that extent, I mean, uh, the uh, fruits of that investment, I mean, uh, will start coming in from Q3. So to that extent, Mathevian will be slightly muted, but significantly better than uh, the Q4 performance that uh, uh, was there. And for them, Q3 and Q4 happens to be the best. Uh, so incidentally, for the 50 days uh, of Mathevian's performance in December, and November and December, we have done uh, uh, close to 22-23% EBITDA margin. So that is the trajectory, I mean, that is a ramp up that happens uh, over a period of time within the CVM. John, if, I don't know if you want to add something around the Messivian piece. Yeah, I think you, you, 
You've explained it very well. There's some seasonality because they're coming into their first quarter, which is our fourth quarter. Um, but that will smooth out. We've also made some you know, conscious decisions to go into new markets, Mexico, Peru, Chile. Um, and that will grow into that cost base over the next six months. So you're right. The, the EBIT will actually hold up um, and improve and expand as we go through and we build momentum. But I think the clear message is both Mr. Messaging and the city and the core with mobile, our revenue base is very robust. It's now about driving the margin levers, which scale will give us, integrations will give us, and just growing into that cost structure. Right. So, uh, John, Owen, just want, uh, on, on this Mercedian bit, uh, so last quarter you reported the margins were in excess of 23%. And uh, this quarter, I think it's come down all the way to 4%. There's seasonality there, some of these investments. Uh, so just, just how should we think about uh, uh, the full year margin trajectory? I mean, obviously, seasonally, seasonally, there are a lot of these variations. But if you could just help yeah. us understand this a little bit better, if you could explain what was the EBITDA margin for the full year last year uh, for Mercedes and uh, post these investments, how should the full year uh, trajectory be looked at? Okay, I'll let Gotham go through the full year EBIT um, sort of forecast. But what I will say is it will follow the same trajectory as last year. So we will be trailing or planning up to that sort of high teams outcome in the year. But obviously, it doesn't have the linearity that lots of other businesses have where you, you hit it every quarter. Um, we've also made those investment decisions which actually provide a drag in Q4 and probably a little bit into Q1. But again, on a quarterly basis, that margin expansion will accelerate in the second half of the year. Um, I'll, I'll sort of let Gotham talk about sure. comparisons to last year and this year and next year. Sure. So, Ashish, uh, last year, uh, Mercedes had clocked a 16% EBITDA margin at a portfolio level for the full financial year. Okay, and and you're saying that can be matched despite the investment this year as well? Yes, I mean, it was, so the ramp up that we are expecting is around uh, uh, the Q3. So uh, definitely some amount of that will uh, uh, play out. Understood. One last question from my side, uh, uh, just to understand a little bit on the gross margin trajectory. Uh, so your gross margin in 4QFI21 was uh, 22%. Uh, and uh, after which we've had uh, the acquisition of Mercedes coming at a 40% plus cross margin, and uh, we saw MRM one full month, which was also additive, at least as far as 4 by 22 uh, goes. And despite the, what we saw was that the gross margin in 4 q 22 has actually declined by 80 basis points, which would mean that the impact on standalone gross margin decline on a YOI basis has been even higher. Uh, uh, so, just want to, you know, could you could you just uh, break that out in terms of what's driving that? Considering that you've mentioned that the at least the bill rates or the per transaction realizations on a standalone business are not very different. So, on the gross margin trajectory, why would that be down so significantly? Why? Why? Sure. So, Ashish, that is largely attributable to a few large accounts, okay, where there are some volume-based discounts. Uh, but they give us massive scale, and because of that scale, uh, I mean the discount. Because of the discounts that's doled out, because of the volume commitment that they have, uh, their gross margin happens to be slightly lower than the portfolio average, and that has actually led to uh, some amount of uh, contraction in terms of the over. Uh, I mean, root mobile's gross margin. Understood, and that would be the only factor largely in that. Yes, that's the that's the reason. Okay, okay, that's that's clear. Thanks, thanks so much for taking my questions. I wish you all the best. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunil Singhania from Abacus. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, and thanks for uh, you know a lot of clarifications. A uh, few things, you know. Uh, on one hand, we are talking about uh, this run rate of 262 crores being maintained, and which uh, one of the other uh, you know participants also mentioned. Second, we have also talked about the fact that we have invested heavily in new geographies, and John mentioned Chile and Mexico and so on and so forth. And obviously, if we have invested, the revenue should only ramp up there. 
and third is uh, it's a normal uh, you know uh, i would say uh, nature of the business that month on month the volume automatically increases and also we have a large sales team which is not going to sit uh, on their backside obviously they would also have targets of getting new businesses so given all this i think 262 into 12 and plus there should be a, uh, an additional thing and rajdeep you did mention that uh, the domestic business itself should grow at 30% plus and therefore if you just add messivian and uh, mr messaging i think the revenue growth comes to at least 70 75% can you just clarify on these points hi hi sir uh, so just to kind of give some perspective you are absolutely right in your assessment i think the internal target is much higher than uh, the 3200 crore uh, i think which is, if you were to analyze that to 62 crores i mean it is between 31 to 3200 crores internal targets are definitely higher than that there is some amount of seasonality in the business i mean which happens usually around q2 uh, but having said that i mean the endeavor is definitely to uh, maintain this march run rate and uh, pile on to the growth we are seeing significant momentum in terms of uh, the indian penetration market share we have been able to grab significant market share there are some large client wins that have happened so uh, we, we we will we sh- i mean so that definitely the target is to achieve that no. uh, 31 3200 crore number plus some growth on top of it sure yes. and uh, and the second thing you know you mentioned 150 basis point increase in margin at the same time obviously as i mentioned it will be uh, ramping up gradually so if you take uh, the the whole year ebitda margin to be 150 basis point higher than current year's whole year uh, can you guide us what would be the exact uh, ebitda margin for march 23 quarter it should be significantly higher than 14 15% right if it is going to scale up gradually and the average ebitda margin is going to be 13 and a half percent sure so uh, operating leverage will kick in so uh, uh, for for q4 so largely if you look at it uh, except for messivian most of the other pieces i think will function at uh, whatever will be the uh, average uh, ebitda margin for the year there will be some operating leverage because of scale advantage uh, it should be around 13% or ebitda margin that we should 13 13 and a half percent ebitda margin for march quarter okay. so it will be it will be more or less stable for the whole year it will be more or less stable except for q1 where there will be some impact because of the messivian piece uh, but uh, yeah largely it will be stable right and the last so that- Uh, yeah, sorry. Just to add, Sunil Bhai, for enterprise customers, the life cycle is, uh, I think, it's three to four months to, to just onboard a customer with a large scale. You know, like so, if you consider a growth of seventy percent, probably that is not the right way to see it because if you talk about India market, also we need to just focus on five to six large customers to onboard them. Right. As far as what we have done, also. So I think we need to also consider the li- how long the one customer onboarding is going to take. And in India, normally large customer is taking about three to four months. No, no, got it, got it. One last thing, uh, Rajiv sir. Uh, you know, we already have cash in our books, and we will be generating a lot of cash. Is our acquisition uh, done, or we would still be looking at acquisitions? So, Sunil, so it's a good question. To be honest, it's a good question because I would like to uh, share some of the thought process. You know, like as we all see, the digital acceleration and digital penetration is growing day by day, and there are lots of uh, digital transaction going to happen in coming days as well. but in the same area there is a digital fraud is also going to happen so we are definitely looking out to do something in digital fraud uh, area domain where we want to make sure we work on a mobile identity as a services as a offering in our portfolio so probably we are looking out to acquire something in voice and uh, mobile identity to complete our entire stack got it thanks a lot sir best wishes for the future thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Pranav Shatria from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so the opportunity. Uh, my first question is uh, regarding the you know the EBITDA margin. Uh, if I look at the cost excluding uh, uh, Messivian for this quarter, uh, that has significantly increased. So how should we see that trajectory for the uh, you know fourth increment cost uh, for uh, uh, Blue Point? 
and uh, you know the, you you did explained a bit about uh, uh, you know the 150 basis point margin expansion uh, but uh, you know the, for the next quarter uh, this uh, uh, massive EBITDA margin will go from 4% to 23% uh, in a in a more staggered manner or it will be a step jump uh, initially and then subsequently when we done yeah so uh, hi hi pranav so i'll just address our second question first so massive the ramp up happens gradually q3 and q4 happens to be their best quarter so q4 last year they did about 23% uh, ebitda margin q3 they did about 18% uh, q2 this year i mean we are expecting it to be around 10% ebitda margin and then gradually ramp that to about 18 and then uh, over 20% ebitda margin for the full year uh, Coming back to your qu the first query uh, on the cost side, so some of the costs I mean actually were one time uh, largely uh, costs around the event that we did the global meet event and some of those uh, uh, conferences that we participated. So Gautam, I'm I'm actually referring to the attachment uh, which you distributed uh, later, so which basically shows that the core employee cost on a quarter on quarter basis, X of Nasiman is up 33 percent. So that I'm trying to understand why the employee cost in this quarter itself has gone up so dramatically. So you, sorry, uh, uh, Pranav, you're asking about uh, Massivian or you're asking about uh, X of Massivian? No, the X of Massivian. Ah, X of Massivian, okay, yeah. So so there were some variable components of the salary which which got integrated into this. Then, uh, in terms of uh, employee benefit expenses, there was this uh, uh, annual meet, which is part of the staff welfare expenses, which is accounted for in the uh, employee benefit expense. Okay, because I thought that uh, you know two, uh, two and a half crore rupees employee, uh, I mean uh, the staff welfare cost is uh, added separately. And no, 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 that's part of the employee benefit expense. Okay, the okay, okay. The, uh, the MWC conference and all, all those things, they are part of the other expenses. Sure. So on a, on a run rate basis, uh, how much, uh, you know, we should be assuming the employee uh, expenses, uh, except in CVM? It should, it should trend down because uh, some of these benefits will not be there. Uh, on absolute basis, except uh, Mr. Messaging and uh, Ms. Even, we should see Q1 FY23 employee cost to be lower, right? And so the margin should come back. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, you know, uh, Rajdeep has, uh, you know, answered, uh, you know, the question on acquisition. But Sorry, just to get to it, Pranav, the voice is breaking. Is not clear. Yes, Pranav, your audio is not clear. It's breaking up. Okay. Sir, I just wanted to ask about the acquisition. Really sorry, uh, Pranav, your audio is not clear. I would just request you to please check your phone line and join back, and we will uh, put your question quickly as you join. Please check your phone line. It's not clear. In the meanwhile, we'll move to the next question. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the question in my audio. So you're, uh, you're sounding a bit low. Can, if you can come closer to the phone or speak a bit louder. Yeah, is it better now? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So thank you for the opportunity. Some of my questions have already been answered. I just wanted to pick your brains around what you're seeing with in the Latin American market. Because some of your global peers uh, <coughs> have suggested increase in competitive intensity in uh, Brazil, which is the biggest market there. That's question number one. And the second question was with regards to uh, the adoption for WhatsApp uh, business messaging. If you could help us understand how are you seeing this progress uh, for the next uh, 12 months? And uh, how should we understand the lower growth or the, or the relatively limited growth for the new product sales in would you for us? Thank you. Anik, hi, Rajdeep here. Uh, I think probably when you... Uh Track down uh, Latin America, I think we have to consider two different parts in Latin America, one uh, Spanish-speaking countries and one Portuguese-speaking countries. So Brazil, I think we do know there are lots of competition and uh, we are not focusing right now big way in a Brazil market, but our major market is uh, Colombia, Peru, Chile and Mexico, which is basically a Spanish speaking countries and where we have a set of people like almost 210 people working with Mesavian 
and we recently increased our team in Mexico and Chile. So I think our focus is going to be more on the Spanish-speaking Latin markets uh, rather than going to the Portuguese market as of now. Sure. And you don't see any increase in competitive right. intensity there? Yeah, just to add, I think the competitive intensity is largely there in Brazil at this point in time. There are a lot of other virgin markets in Latin where we believe there is a lot of potential and hence uh, we are uh, uh, expanding our wings into those markets. I think just to build on that story, because we've got a strong enterprise business with Mesidian based in Colombia and Peru, it gives us a, a lower risk, lower cost of entry into places like Mexico, which is probably 10 times bigger than Colombia, um, and also then down into Chile, which is again a strong economy. So I think we've got, you know, the acquisition of Mesidian, it's not about just um, cut and pasting. We've now got a Spanish speaking market leader with good reference accounts, good people. We're now putting sales teams and offices into those big markets that are culturally aligned to the Colombian and the Spanish speaking. And that's where we're going to probably get quicker revenue success in the short term, which is where we put the cost um, in. So our, as a growth strategy, building more organically around the Obsidian is the right strategy. If we wanted to look at Brazil, that will be a different strategy. Um, and that's, again, under consideration, but it won't come out of the Mesidian acquisition. Thank you. And my second question was around the WhatsApp. Uh, what are you using to WhatsApp business messaging? Let me just uh, give a yeah, brief yeah. about probably. Uh, uh, Manik, if you just see our uh, quarterly revenue growth in a new product, you know, like uh, it is not just WhatsApp, but uh, RCS and Viber and Voice. I think we have done almost um, over $11 million revenue from new product in last financial year. And uh, the kind of traction we are of having not only in India market, but in almost all the global market where we are present right now, uh, including uh, uh, Latin America as well. So all our stack is now being used by uh, Massivian to go and sell to their existing customer base. So we do see lots of opportunity of cross sell and upsell with the Massivian acquisition because we already have a stack uh, which is required in those markets which we are directly handing over to uh, Massivian team to go and sell in the market. So we believe that in coming days, uh, for, uh, uh, Latin America market is going to play a critical role uh, for WhatsApp and other services of new product. Sure. One last clarification. So like over the course of last last four months, you enjoyed some pricing deals, uh, big in segments of the portfolio. Do you see something something similar in regards to these new products for the next one months? Manik, your uh, line is not very Yes, uh, Manik, your voice was actually breaking. We could not I, hear your question clearly. Uh, I'll repeat that question. So, can can you hear me now? It's still yeah, breaking. It's, it's better, but it's still breaking. Please move to a better reception area if you can and repeat your question. Thank you. I'll try one last time. Is it better now? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, my question was to the gotcha there also the last 18 months. We've enjoyed some improvement in pricing because of uh, the increases that happened with certain segments. Do you foresee something similar happening over the next 12 months now? Especially with regards to the WhatsApp uh, business messaging piece? Yeah. So Manik, what is, uh, so just, I mean, I'll also try to uh, add to what Rajiv said for the previous question. So in Q3, I think we have demonstrated significant growth rate in terms of our new product revenue and uh, Q4 it kind of little uh, it got a little normalized uh, uh, because the base has increased quite a bit in Q3 so that's one aspect and further in uh, February there was already a price increase by WhatsApp and that had also some bearing I mean in terms of some teething issues that were there uh, uh, at the point in time so I think now we are fairly stable in terms of the platform and uh, the usage by customers. So we don't envisage any immediate price increase uh, on the WhatsApp front. Thank you. All the best in the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Bhandari from Namura. Please go ahead. Abhishek Bhandari, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. 
request you to unmute yourself from your handset and proceed with your question. Due to no response, we'll move to the next question, which is from the line of Dipesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, two questions. First, about the acquisition of daily ledger. Uh, can you help us understand uh, rational behind it? And if you can provide some detail on the arbitration, uh, what is the issue there? Uh, second question is about the salary hike. Uh, when we plan to give salary hike, which will impact our employee cost? Thanks. So, the best I Rajiv here. Uh, just to uh, let you know about the telegenic product portfolio, which always goes uh, along with 365 squared. You know, like so, there is a, a de uh, firewall deployment of uh, telegenic with Airtel Nigeria. At the same time, they are deployed their SNSCs with uh, ID out of phone also. And with uh, Nokia and Ericsson kind of customer they are serving right now. And I That's think it. one. Rajesh, to intervene, just also, uh, they are asking, so he is asking about telelager, the one that you signed the definitive agreement. Any or telelager, sorry. Ha, ha, telelager, yeah, telelager. Okay. So, this is, telelager is more about uh, having the DLT platform because we have a very strong relationship with operators globally and I uh, believe that in coming days, uh, various part of the world will definitely look for the DLT kind of solution which is implemented already in India. And uh, I think having a blockchain-based uh, DLT platform is definitely one key area where we always believe to have. And with this acquisition, we are going to have uh, access of blockchain-based technology, which is not just a DLT platform, but in, if you talk about entire telecom uh, ecosystem right now, there is a lots of use cases can be created using blockchain, and we will try to focus completely on creating those kind of use cases with operators, where we have a very good inroads and good relationship with them. So I think the idea behind acquiring the uh, t ledgers is to just have a DLT platform and the blockchain uh, capabilities within Root Mobile. Okay. Just to share, they have already deployed the DLT uh, platform with Qtel, uh, Indian operator. Right. I just want to get sense now because that was a decision. Uh, in our sources, uh, purchase. So create versus purchase. In that, I think you selected purchase kind of business. Just want to understand thought process around it. What, uh, why we decided to acquire then organically build it? Because I think their presence is very. Oh, I, I, that's a very, very good question. Because there are certain opportunity we have uh, now come up very recently. You know, like and there are operators who are looking out uh, to do some kind of POC as of now. If we start trying to build it, it will take few months or quarter or year. Uh, so we thought instead of uh, building the blocks uh, by ourselves, let's acquire the company. Because opportunity is there right now and that we believe that in coming quarters or months, there may, may be more operators going to adopt a DLT platform. Okay, and you think India market has enough, op uh, it is largely for international market? Are you? Can you just repeat your question? The DLT platform, uh, we think Indian market is an opportunity or is largely for international expansion? Yeah, India market is an opportunity. And my only question is like if operators are allowing multiple uh, uh, aggregators to put their SMSC within their infrastructure, why not to having two different DLTs? And probably if you see classic example of Airtel, they have uh, IBM and uh, uh, you know, like other DLT platform, and the same thing goes with other operator also. Probably we can create some kind of uh, option or revenue model uh, which gives the enhancement of uh, increase in their revenue. Uh, you know, like so, there are definitely operators are looking out to deploy uh, one more DLT within their network, or maybe three more. So you never know. Understand. And just last part is about the you mentioned some arbitration. So if you can provide some detail, what is there? And by when you expect it to uh, get over, and salary hike when we plan to do, or we in Q4 we already done. Thank you. Salary hike we always uh, have a cycle of uh, salary increment is, is is in April, so there is definitely going to be a salary increase in the month of April. And on arbitration, Gautam, if you want to just highlight. Yeah. Yeah. So there is an ongoing arbitration, which is a contractual breach between the uh, uh, ledgers and uh, uh, a third party. And uh, it's uh, pertaining to some technical know-how and other things. So we'll wait for that arbitration outcome to be concluded. And then uh, we would want to close the transaction. And hence, uh, that conditionality uh, is there as part of the BPA. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
understand and this salary hai ki if you want do uh, do you expect any material impact or how, what how one should look the impact in q1 i don't think the material impact is going to be based on the industry uh, standard that's the uh, base we can expect understand thanks thank you the next question is from the line of suresh navandar from sampada investments please go ahead Uh, hello sir uh, good evening uh, so you uh, spoke about how you are seeing a very good traction in uh, new product sales so uh, what would you guide for your gross margins for next year or two uh, uh, it's very tough to give a product margin guidance because every different product has a different kind of margin uh, set you know so voice may be 70% margin uh, email can be 75% margin or 80% margin uh, same time rcs can be uh, 50% margin so i think we cannot give a guidance for the entire new product but overall we believe that over 40% uh, uh, margin can be considered as a guidance okay so uh, how uh, do you have any internal guidance on how much percentage of your revenue will come from new product sales for fy23 fy24 Have you uh, put any uh, targets internally? We do have an internal target uh, for ourselves and salespeople, and uh, we believe. Gautam, uh, you want to share that? Yeah, so I think we guided. Uh, I think for the year gone by, we guided about ten million dollars. We should be able to close it at uh, about eleven or million dollars. Uh, so we're looking at doubling this uh, for for the year uh, coming year. So you are expecting a hundred percent growth. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, all right. Thank you, sir. And all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Bandari from Nomura. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, Abhishek. Okay. Thank you. Last time there was some audio problem. Sorry for that. Uh, sir, I have very two simple basic questions. One, uh, what was the organic growth rate for Q4 and entire FY22? and second uh, there is a lot of confusion around your ebitda margin improvement that 150 bips is on q4 q4 adjusted or fy22 reported if you can just clarify that will be helpful sorry uh, hi abhishek what was your first query sorry i missed that organic growth rate for q4 and 22 yeah so organic growth rate i think we have mentioned it One second. Yeah, so organic. Uh, okay, I have the total number. For the full year, I can give that to you. Just, just give me some time. We'll give that to you offline, uh, Vijay. Uh, and uh, so for uh, for the quarter gone by, uh, so in Q3, FY. 22 we have done about 531 crores of organic revenue and uh, which in q4 was about 527 crores okay and on so your march that is okay. yoy uh, the growth was 45% uh, organic and Abhishek, what is this? Uh, what is the other thing that you asked? Sorry, I missed it. Number for twenty-three. If you can give that number, one uh, fifty bips is on what base? Q four reported, Q four adjusted, or FY twenty-two reported? Q four. Uh, so uh, the Q four adjusted number. Okay, sure. My third question is, you know, uh, Gautam, we are also seeing uh, a lot of slowdown in. Uh, you know many uh, consumer tech apps you know which were beneficiary of a lot of leisure time during the covid period and that also was you know a lot of volumes uh, for many people like us uh, if you could you know share your early thoughts on are you also seeing you know similar kind of thing uh, in your you know business profile or uh, it's too early to call out any slowdown I think it's too early. I'm just saying, Rajiv, here it's too early. In fact, we see a massive growth in our volume. We see uh, in our last quarter in, uh, volume to previous quarter. So I think our volume is growing. But you are right. But there are some apps. But those apps are very small in terms of uh, volume grow, uh, contribution. But I think it's too early to even think about it. 
what I would say, Raj, to, to build on that is, if you look at our key global customers, those native, inter, uh, native internet customers, we're still probably 15 to 20 percent of their market share. And as we open up new regions, our headroom to grow with those customers increases. So I think you're right in that I wouldn't be giving a forecast, but there's, we have headroom within our business and our relationships to grow. Right. Thank you and all the best gentlemen for coming here. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. As I look for the questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta for closing comments. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice evening. Take care. Thank you. On behalf of Root Mobile Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Also, if you have any further queries, please send an email to investors at rootmobile.com or gaurav.g at conceptpr.com. I repeat, if you have any further queries, please send an email to investors at rootmobile.com or gaurav.g at conceptpr.com. Thank you very much for attending this conference. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.